Welcome to the Lose Weight, Live Life podcast. If you're someone who would do anything to lose weight, yet finds it impossible to stick to a diet, to eat less, or just what you think you should, this podcast is for you. I am your host, certified life and weight mindset coach, Claire McKenzie. Listen in to learn how to stop overeating, lose weight for the last time, and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, all without diet deprivation and self-sabotage. Hi everyone and a very warm welcome to podcast episode number 98. Today we are talking about the next level on your weight loss journey and um, I'm saying this for the second time because I just recorded this entire podcast before I realised I hadn't pressed the record button. Anyway, not to worry, here we go. I'm excited to share with you what I'm talking about today but before we start I want to let you know that registration is now open for the third and final Weight Loss Mindset Coaching Experience Week of 2022. This time, it's all about overcoming overeating, and it's for all women in midlife who are unhappy with their weight and interested in creating a better relationship with food, themselves and their lives, so that they can lose their weight for the last time. If this is you, then I really would love you to take part. If you have friends or family members who you also think would be interested, then please do share the registration URL, which I'm going to give you in just a moment with them. So I asked members of the Lose Weight Live Life community what topics would be most of interest to them. And then we created a schedule for the week around that. And so what we're going to cover is on day one, we're going to talk about self-sabotage, which was actually the most requested topic. On day two, we are talking about ending emotional eating. Day three is all about how to feel better without turning to food. And day four is about making your current or your next weight loss journey your last one. And then on day five, we're going to have a QA and a session. And then this time I'm going to do a second Q&A session or at the weekend, because I know some of you maybe catch up towards the later part of the week or the weekend. And I want to give you an opportunity to have a Q&A session as well. So this week is also an opportunity for you to find out everything that you want to know about the Lose Weight Live Life Academy, if that is something that you're interested in. So Coach Experience Week runs from Sunday the 11th of September to Saturday the 17th of September and the Academy enrolment will open the same week. If you want to take part in Coach Experience Week, you're going to want to register so that you get the replay updates, the workbook and your private podcast link. The private podcast is something that we did for the first time back in April and it worked really well. And essentially it just means you get an email, you click on the link and then all of the replays for Coach Experience Week appear in your podcast app as once we've processed them, as they happen. So you've got really easy access to them. So to get all of this, you need to register and go to www.thebestyou.coach forward slash overcoming overeating 22 pod. That's www.thebestyou.coach forward slash overcoming overeating 22 pod. The overcoming overeating 22 pod, that's P-O-D, is all one word, no spaces and no hyphens. All right, I will put a link in the show notes so that if you're listening on Apple podcasts or on the website, you can look there and just click the link. That might also be there in the other podcast apps, but I'm not 100% sure which support link clicking. Okay, so let's talk about the next level on your weight loss journey. So this is a podcast episode that is going to be relevant for you, whether you are making good progress on your weight loss journey, whether you have been making good progress and then got a bit stuck, or whether you have not got started yet. So in the Lose Weight Live Life Academy, you learn many, many skills to help you create a relationship with food, yourself and your life that you love so that you can lose your weight for life. And it's necessary to learn these skills because as we know, knowing what and how to eat to lose weight is not what it's about, which is why diets don't work. In order to lose weight permanently and manage your weight for life, you need to better understand why you eat the way that you do why you eat in a way that has led you to being unhappy with your weight, to being overweight. And that's all about understanding how your body, brain, mind and emotions interact with food so that you know what's going on with you when you overeat, as well as looking at your relationship with yourself and how that 
interplays with your relationship with food and your relationship with life, your life and how that interacts with how you eat as well. So for example, when it comes to your body, that looks like being very aware of not just what you eat, but also how you eat in ways that feel good in your body or give you pleasure or comfort, as well as understanding how the different foods you eat help or hinder hormone imbalance, which can impact how easy or difficult it is for you to lose weight. When it comes to your brain, it's about understanding and then managing desire and over-desire that you may have for certain foods or drink. When it comes to your mind, it's about understanding how diet mentality may be making it more difficult for you to think about food in the way that you want that feels like food freedom. Or it may be about understanding how your upbringing or just the culture and society that we live in today impacts the decisions you make around food. And then when it comes to your emotions, it's about understanding how you use food in your life to regulate your emotions. I read just this week something that a former private client shared with me. It's quite a while ago that she shared this with me, but it really resonated with what I'm talking about here. And what she said was, despite declaring loudly and constantly that I am not an emotional person, I have finally accepted that my unhealthy and unhelpful eating is driven by how I am feeling. I've been using food to dampen down boredom, frustration, disappointment, anxiety, etc. True, I am not a person who has big emotional outbursts, but who knew, not I, that smaller, lower level, but important emotions were being regulated with food. And that's her words and what she shared, but I can honestly say I could have written that myself. I resonate so much with what she's sharing there. Okay, so there's a lot to look at, but the good news is that you don't need to look at everything to start and continue losing weight, just what's relevant for you. So I want you to imagine your weight loss journey in one of two ways, depending on which of these resonates with you. Number one is to think of it as a journey across the monkey bars in your local park. That's the climbing frame where you climb up and then you hold onto the first bar by your hands dangling down and then you move from one bar to the next all the way across if you can. Now, and I don't think I could ever do them. Um, what generally happens is that as you hang down, you may not have the strength to swing to the next bar or you may not have the right rhythm or the right balance. In order to move across the monkey bars, you need strength and stamina. You need to perfect a technique. And the way to get there, of course, is you start, you drop down, you go back to the beginning, you climb up. And each time you do that, you are going to be getting stronger, getting more skillful, getting more flexible, whatever it is, getting more momentum, whatever it is that is required. Now, some children might find this pretty tricky, as I would have done, and maybe they go to the park weekly, and each time they go, they have a go at the monkey bars, and maybe they, you know, every few weeks, they find they can get to the next bar. Where, so whereas the first to the second bar may have been incredibly difficult, when they first tried by week four, that is incredibly easy, and they're getting halfway across before they drop down. This is how I want you to think about your weight loss journey. You will move forward for a bit and then you effectively drop down. Now, this might look like you having a weekend of eating all of the things or you having a binge because somebody's upset you at work or you becoming distracted by work and then realizing you've not paid attention to how you've been eating for a few days. You've not even thought about it. This is the type of thing that for many of us would have been the equivalent of going off a diet. But what we do now is realize that it's as important a part of the journey, if not more important than when we're eating how we want to eat to lose weight. Because each time we do another round, we get more proficient, more skilled, we have more strength and more compassion for ourselves and we don't make it mean anything. So each time these things come up that have us effectively, you know, dropping off focusing on how we eat, just like it is falling off the monkey bars, we are going to be using those as an opportunity to learn. So the second way that you may want to think about this is as different levels in a video game. So although I haven't played video games in 25 years, maybe it works the same way. You start off in your video game, you effectively try and do as much as you can, or you get as far forward as you can without losing your life. When you lose your life, you go back to the beginning. It could be that you have to work out which door to go through to get onto the next bit of that particular level. It might be that you need to work out how to avoid the 
trapdoor or avoid getting shot or killed by or zapped by something. It might be that you need to collect enough bonus points in order to get you to the next level. There's all sorts of different ways, obviously, that we can go about it. But when you first start there, you've got you've got no idea what you're doing, what's coming at you. But by repeating the process of quickly losing your life, going back to the beginning, you really your, your brain teaches you, you learn, don't you, really, really quickly. And that is how you the process that you follow to progress through the levels. And again, you might be wanting to think about your weight loss journey in the same way. You have to mess up in order to understand why you ate the way that you did to get you to the point where you were unhappy, you are unhappy with your weight. So now that I've given you these examples, and I've also laboured the point, which is that I really want you to learn from what's going on for you that sort of trips you up and makes things difficult for you, which is something that we're often very uncomfortable doing because it's not how we're used to approaching diets. I want you to think about what possible level are you at on your weight loss journey or whereabouts on the monkey bars are you and think about what your next level looks like. Because here's the thing, it's easy for us to get a little stuck on a certain level because we forget that in order to move to the next level, we need to explore doing things a little differently. So I want you to, I want to take you through what that might look like in two scenarios that are you not having got started yet and you being in the middle of your journey and finding that it wasn't working or kind of isn't working for you anymore. Sometimes one of the most difficult things is getting started. And there's many reasons for that. We don't trust ourselves. We don't trust that it, whatever it in inverted commas is, will work. We think that because our previous diet experiences have been pretty awful, that it's going to be pretty awful. And whilst we want to lose weight, we're not looking forward to weeks of not eating how we want. Other reasons look like having an all or nothing approach, being confused about what we should actually do thinking that we need a quiet time at work or a clear social diary, so many reasons not to get started, all really understandable. If this is you, the way to get started is to address what's stopping you. This is your level one. This is you understanding all the reasons you don't want to work at losing weight. I encourage you to write them all down. You're going to want to get them all out of your head. Ask yourself, what's this voice in my head telling me? If you don't ask, you won't find out. Write it all down and then pick one and examine it and question it in more detail. So let me give you an example. Maybe you have a nagging voice in your head telling you that you'll be miserable. So you discover that the reason you don't want to get started on your weight loss journey is because you'll be miserable. That's your default belief. But rather than just listening to that voice, what we want to do is question it. So this is me showing you how to coach yourself a little bit. So ask yourself why. Why is it that you think that working at losing weight or makes you miserable? Well, you might say, because I can't eat what I want. Okay, so what is it that you want to eat that you're telling yourself you can't eat when you're working at losing weight? And your answer might be chocolate. Okay, so what, why is it I am miserable, first of all, if I can't eat chocolate. Well, you might say because it's my favourite treat. It's what I look forward to at the end of the day. And without it, I would have nothing to look forward to. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. This, as I said, is an example of working on what's going on in your mind and how it's impacting how you choose to eat or what you do or don't do. So we know, firstly, that there's a part of us, at least, that wants to include eating chocolate as a part of our weight loss. Okay, no problem. Of course you can eat chocolate and lose weight. We know that our default thinking is that our day is hard or difficult in some way to the extent that we need to give ourselves something to look forward to at the end of the day. Okay, so maybe level one looks like us digging into our day a little more to see why it is we're not enjoying it, why it is we're enduring it and holding on to sort of get through it until we can treat ourselves at the end of the day. We've also just shown ourselves that we currently don't think outside of the chocolate box when it comes to treats. So maybe our level one looks also looks like us exploring new ways to treat ourselves just so that we have some options and then we can choose whether we always want our treats to be chocolate or whether we can actually treat or reward ourselves in non-food ways or ways that both we both love and support us in our weight loss goals. 
So now getting started at losing weight is looking nothing like a diet or possibly like we were telling ourselves it would look like. It's looking like you focusing on how you can eat chocolate and lose weight, how you can treat yourself in many different and amazing ways, how you can enjoy your life more so that you're not feeling the desire for chocolate quite so often. Okay, maybe getting started doesn't need to equate to being miserable because you can't eat what you want to eat. All right, so that's the example of if you've not got started yet. So let me give you the next example then. What if you're in the middle of your weight loss journey and you've reached a weight loss plateau? What might leveling up look like for you? So in the first example, we focused on what's going on in your mind. In this one, let's look at our emotions. Often we're in the, we're in the middle of our weight loss journey, we're liking how we're eating, we're intentional about planning our meals, and we're maybe eating according to our intentions or how we've planned, maybe maybe 85% or 90% of the time. And, And that's great. And whilst we're losing weight, that's absolutely fine. But then maybe we get to a point where we hit a plateau and we see that eating according to how we are planning our foods and our meals 85% or 90% of the time is just not quite enough for us to get that downward trend going again on the scales. So maybe we want to get it so that we're eating according to our plan, take it from either 85% to 90 or 90 to 95. So what we want to do, of course, is dig in and explore where it is we're eating differently to how we planned. What often comes up is that people are really comfortable with how they're eating. They've got the weeks nailed, but maybe they are seeing that there's some areas on the weekend where they're not eating how they planned. And maybe they're, they're planning to eat. I often encourage, I ate differently at the weekend during my weight loss journey. I planned to have some drinks on a Friday night. I planned to have different foods on a Friday night. That was all a part of my plan. And I continued to, to do that and still continue to do it. Um, whilst I lost all my weight and that's fine. But sometimes what we might find at the weekend is that there are occasions where we're eating differently to how we've planned that we're not that fussed about. We're not that bothered if we really think about it, about having those things. So that might look like the example I'm thinking of is a Sunday evening So it might be that we generally, we're happy to enjoy our Sunday evening roast without a glass of wine and without dessert. But our partner always has a glass of wine and always has dessert. And so maybe we have got into the habit of joining them with the glass of wine and the dessert, even though we're really not that bothered and we don't get that much pleasure from it. We might have that sense that we regret having though the wine and the dessert after the meal. And it's important to notice if you're feeling that regret, because that is a sign that it's something to look at. It's about noticing that what you want in the moment, you later think maybe wasn't worth it or you wished you hadn't had it. It's noticing the pleasure you get from whatever it is, is fleeting. And you probably wouldn't want the wine and dessert, maybe if they weren't right there in front of you. And maybe they're not even your first choice of wine and dessert. So if you really think about it, it would be like, well, if I was going to have some wine or dessert, I would have something different. Okay, this is the reason that the reason this is you leveling up in the area of your emotions is because the reason you're having the dessert and the wine that you don't even really want is because in the moment, not having them would mean that you would need to feel the discomfort of unfulfilled desire. Okay, so in the moment, your brain, and this is how brains work, wants you to eat the food and drink the drink because it is able to anticipate the pleasure of the neurotransmitter dopamine that gets released when you have them. So your brain is really wanting you to have the wine and the dessert because it wants the dopamine, okay? And what you want to do is to allow yourself to feel that desire without responding to it, and that feels uncomfortable because, of course, as animals, how we're designed is to respond to desire, is to fulfill our desires, okay? It's what we're programmed to do. So the question you want to ask yourself is, are you willing to feel uncomfortable during your Sunday evening roast whilst your partner drinks their glass of wine and eats their dessert? You might want to break this down further and think, how long would I need to feel uncomfortable for? You could time yourself. You might be discover that it's only for five or 10 or 20 or maybe 30 minutes. Are you willing to feel uncomfortable for that level of time? Can you practice this? This is your level up, okay? So that might be something that on the level that you're at right now, you identify somewhere within your week where you're eating foods that you would probably 
consciously, intentionally rather not have because you're not willing to feel the discomfort of desire and not respond to it. And that would be a great example of a level up. Okay, so that is what I wanted to talk to you about today. I want you to think about what level you're at and what's going on for you on that level right now and what one or two, but mostly one thing you might want to overcome in order to move to the next level. It's important to keep your levels simple. Don't think you need to address everything at the level you're at. Decide what's most important and work at that until you've perfected it and then move on to the next level. So I also thought just before I go, I would give you a list of examples of things that you may want to master at the various levels. There's no set order in which these should appear at the levels. Your journey will be totally unique to you. So we've got things like staying hydrated, treating yourself in non-food ways, not eating to alleviate boredom, not eating to the point where you're overly full, not picking up foods whilst you're preparing meals in the kitchen, enjoying a takeout and eating within the realm of how you want to be eating. So oftentimes when we have takeouts, we use that to mean that we don't have to pay attention and we just have whatever it is, we eat all the things. It doesn't need to be that way. You can absolutely have a takeout as a part of your weight loss journey, but you're going to want to pay attention to how you eat. And that's a skill, a different way of thinking about takeouts that you're going to want to learn and perfect. Enjoying a glass of wine without it meaning you're eating all the things often comes up as well. Getting comfortable putting leftovers in the bin instead of in your stomach meeting a friend for coffee and enjoying the occasion whilst not joining her in cake eating, saying no to the person whose birthday it is at work if you'd rather not have the cake, planning your meals, writing down what you eat and reflecting what that does and what does and doesn't work for you, having meals in the freezer for when you're exhausted after a longer than normal work day, and of course there are hundreds and hundreds more. All right, that is what I want you to talk about, wanted to talk to you about today. Go away, have a think about where you're at, be curious about what that next level up might look like for you. What skill do you want to perfect on the level that you're at? And just a final reminder, if you haven't yet registered, go, do register for the Overcoming Overeating Weight Loss Mindset Coaching Experience Week. We start Sunday, the 11th of September. To register, go to www.thebestyou.coach forward slash overcoming overeating 22 pod. All right. And if you're in the academy, look out for the September deep dive work where we are going to be focusing on the leveling up process. All right, everybody have a great week and I will speak to you next week. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and are ready to live a more intentional life, lose weight as a part of that journey and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, then I would be honoured to have you join the Lose Weight Live Life Academy membership and coach with me. The programme offers different levels of support to suit you, including self-paced learning, twice weekly calls, private coaching, an amazingly caring community and lots more. Find out all the details about when and how you can join at www.thebestyou.coach forward slash coaching.